What, what, what advice would you give people who were just sort of starting off on the land for, right at the start? How would you? Well, the, the first thing I advise them is uh, don't get too far in debt. Yeah. You know, because debt is, I mean, uh, debt is enslavement. And um, so, you know, so do things that take time and not money and, uh, and use your creativity to, uh, to do for yourself and, you know, and, and shepherd your little nest egg, whatever it is, shepherd mm -hmm. that thing and uh, let, that, let that economically be as slow as possible. And then, um, and then you know, the, the, next, the next thing I would say is, um, I mean, obviously this assumes you're, you're getting in touch with the land. You know, one of the permaculture concepts is don't do anything for a year till you've walked it, seen it, seen where the water goes, seen where the frost pockets are, see where the dry spots are, you know, those kinds of things. Get it, let the land speak to you. And then, and then um, you know, start with something you like. Uh, what do you like to eat? What do you like to do? What fascinates you? What, you know, stokes your boiler? And then start with that and try to do enough extra that you can sell some of it. Mm. And, uh, and, and, and in other words, try to start some, some income. A little bit of little bit of income and, and cash flow and then if you've shepherded your nest egg and you started with something you really like then um, then hopefully uh, you that will that will drive your cash flow and gradually you know your cash flow will catch up to your nest egg before it runs out yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's, you know that's but that's the idea it's really about but, make, making sure you don't chew through any of that nest egg you know. Don't chew through the nest egg, and of course, you know, get in touch with your neighbors, involve yourself in the community. That's where you make connections to who, who owns what, what machine that you might want to use. Who's got a, you know, who's who's who does uh, monthly trips to town that might want to, might want to um, take, you know, take product to customers. You know, when they're going to town anyway. Um, I mean. Uh, Nathan, the guy that does the herd share dairy, the young mm, farmer that yeah. you met this week, or you met vicariously, mm. um, uh, he just he just found a guy that works as a janitor at a high school in the in Charlottesville, which is 30 miles away, where he has two of his milk drops for his herd share members, and so he's paying this guy uh, just like 20 bucks to take an extra 10 minutes and drop the milk in these two buying club locations when he goes to work every day and it just it just bought him a whole day a week of labor of yeah. not having to run over there and back. It really is about that functional connections amongst members of your community, isn't it? Rather it, is. Than, it is. Rather than having these grand visions and grand plans up front mm -hmm. and then blowing everything in one one uh, you know, big mistake. Yeah. And yeah. And and, and I think too, just um, not trying to plan too far ahead. Honestly. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we can we can get parallel. We can try to plan too far ahead and overrun our learning curve. Mm. Mm. <laughs> the learning curve is steep, and so don't plan very far ahead. Plan, you know, plan a year, plan a year or two, and uh, and and just realize that you're going to learn so much in the next two years that whatever you think is going to be in the next three years is probably going to be obsolete by the time you get there. Yeah. yeah. That works well with what you've been saying uh, about the, the sort of low-cost, flexible infrastructure. You know, not not uh, encumbering yourself with either debt or large uh, volumes of inflexible infrastructure that are likely to right. just bog you down. Right. Yeah. right. Yeah, it can be hard though because you know when you're starting, you 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 you're so worried about your future that you you feel like you have to back one plan. You know, mm -hmm. you've got you've got to throw everything into this thing to make it. You know. Get the turnover to support you in the lifestyle that you've become accustomed to. Yeah, yeah, or make it, yeah, or make it perfect. And um, you know, uh, I, you know, I, I, I sense, I sense your desire to, to uh, make things perfect here, but I would encourage you not to leave this sheep shed too soon. Mm. It's a nice space. It's here. It's very acceptable very functional mm. Mm. and nobody's complaining about it it works great you've got toilets here close blah, 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 blah. and um, and I, I, generally I would say you know don't move from something until you get shoved out of it for mm. some reason whether it's not big enough it's not functional enough uh, 
whatever, you know, the roof caves in, people don't like it. I mean, yeah. until you're shoved out of it, don't, don't bite off another project to chew on until you actually get shoved out of what's functioning already. And, uh, and so, so uh, you know, grandiose, I mean, Teresa and I never had, we, our only plan was we just want to be full-time farmers. That was, our, that was our only plan. We didn't have plans to write books, to speak at conferences, to, to rent farms, to, I mean, none of this stuff. Yeah. And so, um, so we just we just put our noses to the grindstone and and you know we only ate what we grew, uh, you know we we wanted to we wanted to feed ourselves. So we said if we could if we could figure out how to grow toilet paper and Kleenex, we could pull the plug on society, you know. <laughs> but we you know we had all our own fuel, fuel. We had all our own food. We didn't have to go anywhere for entertainment because we loved what we did. We drove a fifty dollar car, you know, and uh, we didn't buy machinery and. Instead, we um, we we really focused on um, on on our own carbon resource. You know, we didn't. Of course, at that time, you didn't hear about manure tea and all these other things. But one of the reasons we didn't soil sample and stuff was because we knew if we soil sample and it said you need you know a thousand pounds of phosphorus per acre, well, we couldn't afford it anyway. So there's no sense in wasting the time soil sample. If we got time to soil sample. We might as well go. Um, direct market three more beeves and make an extra three hundred dollars a beef yeah. than we would selling them at the sale barn. You know what I'm saying? Worry about the things that you've got control over. Worry about things you got control over. <laughs> <laughs>